Recently, I had some people in a challenge tracking their food to support them and starting to make more decisions that align with their goals, become a little bit more aware of what they're eating, the amounts, just like getting a good sense of what portions are because I think we lost that sense along the way somehow. We were less intuitive in knowing how much we're eating. But um, this interesting phenomenon happens with people who are tracking and maybe are doing really well and then they go out for dinner one night and then all of a sudden they're like, well, I couldn't really track it because I couldn't find what I was looking for. So I guess I just scrapped it. I didn't track it. So like the question always is, so if you can't track it, you just scrap it. Like it, there's no in between. And I really always want to foster this in between decision making. It's, <clears throat> it's not on or off. It's not track or don't track. It's like you do your best. Maybe it's not the exact avocado toast that's on that menu because they add a little bit of something else. But being somewhat accurate is better than not being aware at all. Especially when you're in that phase that you're trying to learn what the calorie values are. That you want to make sure that you're trying to find where your calorie targets are because the first thing you do is you, you put it into the to let's say if it's my fitness pal you calculate how many calories you are and then you start tracking and then you start seeing okay i'm losing really quickly i'm losing too slowly whatever it is and you adjust the calorie goals based on your experience based on how much exercise you get based on okay maybe i thought i was more active than i was but i'm actually a little bit more sedentary so i have to bring the calories down whatever it is the the estimation is only up to about 80 percent of the people it's within 10% accuracy for 80% of the people. So there is some level of accuracy, but it's not, it's not perfect, right? So there is some room to play. You have to figure it out. And the problem with trying to be 100% accurate is that, A, you don't even know if the, the target you're trying to get to is accurate. Nonetheless, trying to be 100% accurate. And, and in both instances, just because you can't get to that level of accuracy doesn't mean you shouldn't do it at all. That's precisely the thinking that got us here in the first place. So just because you can't track it, you shouldn't just scrap it. You kind of do your best. And if you can't find that exact meal that is listed on that menu or on that drive through board or on you're going to someone's house, and you, just because you can't find that exact thing doesn't mean you can't track it. And if the very worst case scenario, you can track individual ingredients as best as you can. Okay, so you had a burger and you realize there's a patty is probably about four ounces and you had like three slices of tomatoes. That's not that many calories. Lettuce, you had some uh, some ketchup and some mustard and then some mayo. Uh, okay, maybe you track those things. Let's say it was a tablespoon of each. Who knows? But you're trying to be somewhat accurate. Just because you can't, you didn't bring a scale to weigh it, it doesn't mean it's not accurate. You had some fries on the side. Okay, roughly about two handful. Maybe that's about two cups. You know, I don't know. That's X amount based on whatever the tracker is saying. You do your best. It's impossible to be perfect. So why are you holding yourself to that standard? You should track it no matter what. No matter how accurate you can be, you do the best that you can. Just guesstimate it or try to get as close to you as you can. But the, but the very point here is not just because you can't track it doesn't mean you should scrap it.